Africa, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, I want to make a correction and a retraction, and I will ask you to make sure people are informed of this so we no longer have a misperception of this Japan earthquake and tsunami drill. Now, I don't want to make excuses, but the initial information was forwarded to me by someone who later I became very suspicious of and broke ranks with and went back to doing my old thing. So, and I've written about this extensively, how they try to put people close to you, controlled opposition agents, give you some good information over time, and then they'll either slip you some bunk or they'll flake out and try to discredit you. And it's very clever, very clever. Now, that being said, ultimately the fault lies on me. A troll's gonna be a troll and a shill's gonna be a shill. It's my duty to confirm or deny. So I see on this particular instance, the fault lies entirely with me. Okay, so I do apologize for that. Now, what I should have done early on was make contact with the NRC and say, hey, this is incredible. Can you confirm or deny that? That's what I'm supposed to have done. I did not do that. Again, so I take complete responsibility for it. Now, that being said, let me pull up this document. And if you read through this 1132 page beauty from the NRC, you will clearly see that the Japan earthquake and tsunami drill is no drill at all. It is an incident response, as it says right here, incident response. It's in response to the earthquake and tsunami. And it appears as if NRC scrambles some employees, puts them on the clock, and they're helping assist post earthquake and tsunami and they want to get paid for it that's what all this tac thing is about and they're worried about their hours this is clearly indicated in this document although in this screen capture here there seems to be some argument whether it's an exercise or a drill and brian mcdermott says this is not a drill okay so you can call it exercise and alert whatever you want but clearly as i pour through this document it is in response to the Japan earthquake and tsunami, not a drill that was planned ahead of time where people show up and they take their positions and enact what would be uh, the incident itself, okay, to be very clear on that. Now, that being said, I went into my book and I've made some corrections. Let me back up here to the beginning of this chapter. And I made some corrections and I just want you to know that although there was no um, Japan earthquake and tsunami drill of that day, apparently. This, again, is new information that has come to light that controverts that. Okay, I will say this. In town, that uh, days preceding the March 11th event, there's this regulatory information conference. And these guys meet, apparently, every year, right around the end of the first week of March. This year, it's 11th through the 14th. And all sort of officials show up at this conference in this particular instance, the JNES, the Japanese equivalent of the NRC, and the Japanese um, the stakeholders, the licensees, the, the uh, power plant operators, have sent a lot of their seismic specialists over here to the states. Okay, so leading up to that on the 8th through the 10th is this RIC conference, and in that conference, the NRC's Office of Nuclear Security and Incident Response gives a presentation that outlines the flow and control of information after an incident such as Fukushima. So in this presentation that went down on the 10th, one day preceding the earthquake and tsunami in Japan, this guy is outlining how all these agencies and authorities control the information, how the flow of information operates after an incident. So I thought that was rather interesting. Now, furthermore, furthermore, uh, Elliot Brenner does not want people, to, here's again, here's the cover page to this in the FOIA documents. This would have been the guy's presentation is what I'm taking this to be that went down at the 10th. Jason Kozal would have given a, a presentation on NRC incident response. And in that he outlines all these agencies that come together and who's in control and how the information flows and uh, NARAX involved in DHS and FEMA and all these sort of things. And interestingly enough, the same ones involved in the cover-up okay, are involved and pointed out in this presentation. Now you're looking at a screen capture here where Elliot Brenner, head of OPA, on March 11th, Friday, March 11th, 11.15 a.m., he's asking how did Platt's reporters find out that Japanese quote-unquote utility execs were at headquarters responding to the quake. So the day this went down, 
at their building, at their communications facility in Rockville, Maryland, the NRC headquarters, there's a bunch of Japanese utility execs there responding to the quake. Now, this is not indicative of a drill, per se, but if nothing else, what this does show me is that two things. Number one, all these players were in position and, and nearby, left over from this RIC. If you wanted to have people to call upon as this event went down to put in your positions to control information for your conspiracy, they were there. They were available. They were likely just a phone call away. They hadn't even left town yet. So that was interesting as well. And number two, I should say that the NRC and Elliot Brenner, these people can't say they didn't have good information early on. Folks, they had Japanese utility execs, or regulators, if that's what Elliot wants you to call them, that were at their headquarters in Rockville, Maryland, as this event went down in their communications facilities. So they had excellent real-time information on what was going on in Fukushima. They can't say we didn't know. They can't use the fog of war excuse. Right, because they had firsthand, directly from JNES, right from the Japanese regulators and the utility execs at their own headquarters. Right. Okay. So, to summarize, I've had to make a retraction. Again, not to make excuses, but be careful, guys. If you've got a blog or you're an activist, you got a website, YouTube channel, busy on Facebook. Once you become become effective and start to make waves. You have to be wary of people that approach you, say, oh, you're great, I love what you do, and they want to get involved with you, and then ultimately they flake out on you and give you bogus information. Again, though, in this particular instance, the error is completely on, on, on my shoulders. But I would warn you to be wary of who you work with and who you involve yourself with in this day and age. Okay, I've written an alternative media meltdown, a book on this, Controlled Opposition. Please read it so you know what I've been going through. Okay. Appreciate you guys joining me for this. Make sure you get the word out. There was not a Japan earthquake and tsunami drill. And dear NRC, you know, you guys can contact me too. And if I have something up that's obviously blatantly wrong like this, and you guys know the true story of this, please feel free to contact me. I'm on Facebook. I'm not that hard to get a hold of. I want to, I don't want to mischaracterize or misconstrue anything. It wouldn't be a bad idea for you guys to, you know, or me to make contact with the NRC. I've got an email address for them now, actually, where I, should, again, I say the fault lies with me for not contacting NRC and saying, hey, is this true? Can you confirm or deny this, right? Okay, so that error was mine. Full responsibility. Please get the word out that there was not a Japan earthquake and tsunami drill on March 11th. Thanks for being understanding, guys. This is Patrick Penry. Love you all. Over and out.